Hello everyone, it's Matmus here with you today. Thank you for joining me, I really do appreciate it. So, a lot of you have been asking for me to do some more actual tank review videos lately, and I'm gonna get round to more of them, guys. I'm just uh, having a little bit of fun making fun of some uh, videos here that you've seen recently on my channel. So, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. I like having a bit of comedy and humour in there too, it's not always serious. So today we are talking about the iconic T-54, T-55 series of vehicles, and my goodness, guys, are these vehicles steeped with history. Like, there are just so many variants, so much history, so much past on them. It's really, really impressive to talk about them today. Um, guys, as always, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment for today's video, and also feel free to share on Facebook. I also do have my Patreon account, so if you wish to make any kind donations, feel free to do so on that account page. So... The T-54-55 medium tank family is, without a doubt, one of the most iconic armoured vehicles of all times. Throughout the Cold War, even with the appearance of the much more modern vehicles, its distinctive silhouette remained one of the symbols of Soviet armoured might. With according to some sources, around 100,000 of these vehicles have actually been built. The T-54-55 series of vehicles is the most produced tank series of all time. It was widely exported and used by dozens of countries. The T-55 itself was developed as an upgrade from the aging T-54, which was basically a late World War II design. The early prototype was called Object 155. It was designed at plant number 183 in Nizli Tagil by a team led by L.N. Kartsev in the summer of 1957. Its main advantage over rival advanced medium tank projects in the Soviet Union was the relatively low cost for such an upgrade compared to starting production of an entirely new tank model. Surprise, surprise guys, that's still happening today. The upgrade was based on the T-54B with several important improvements. Specifically, the amount of shells carried increased from 34 to 43. The 12.7mm anti-aircraft Dushka machine gun was removed. The new improved night vision equipment was installed. Nuclear, biological, and chemical protection on the hull could be pressurized. A new Rosa automatic fire extinguisher was installed. A new smoke grenade system capable of laying around 200 to 400 meters of smoke screen, lasting for 2 to 4 minutes, was installed. And the engine was tuned to 520 horsepower up to 580 horsepower. There was also an external fuel tank capacity which was increased, and various other smaller improvements were made. Armor protection was not changed significantly compared to the T-54. The rear hull armour thickness was reduced to 45mm to 30mm on the upper rear and from 30mm to 20mm on the engine deck to save weight and the engine deck thickness was reduced to 20mm to 15mm. The loader's hatch on the turret was redesigned as well, in connection with the removal of the machine gun. Thanks to a V55 580 horsepower engine, the tank was actually relatively quite fast, reaching around 50km an hour. The armament, however, remained the same. The 100mm D-10-T-2S rifle gun. Eventually it was placed obsolete, leading to the appearance of the T-62 medium tank. Two prototypes were built and tested from the winter of 1957 to the spring of 1958. The tests were generally quite successful and the vehicle was accepted into service under the designation of T-55 in May 1958. By the late 1960s and 1970s, the T-55 was becoming increasingly obsolete, which was a problem for the Soviet Union and the entire Warsaw Pact, which was operating them in extremely high numbers of the T-54 and 55 series. All the Warsaw Pact members realised this and worked independently on various improvements to the tanks with its own upgrades, resulting in considerable amounts of both national and Soviet T-54-55 subtypes that looked more like they'd been worked on or more or less the same. The improvements generally focused on armour improvement, often in the form of additional armour plating of the hull and the turret front or an additional installation of the explosive reactive armour kits, firepower improvement by basically giving the gun a launched missile development system and the installation of a fire control system, and finally mobility improvement included up to tuning the existing engine or replacing it with something more powerful and reliable. The Soviet T-55M was one of these improved variants. The decision to develop it was taken in July 1981, and the goal, quite an optimistic one, was to improve the T-55 protection and firepower to the T-64 Alpha and T-72 levels. This was extremely difficult. The development of the tank was finished in April 1983 as an upgrade kit to the earlier T-55 variants. The T-55 improvement was called T-55M, and T-55 Alpha improvement was called T-55 Alpha M or Alpha Mike. 
The armour of the tank was increased by adding a pleak BDD plate to the upper frontal hull and additional BDD armour plates, nicknamed Lilac's Eyebrows by some western publications, to the most exposed frontal part of the turrets. BDD armour is not just the simple applique kit. The steel plate on the outside is approximately about 3cm thick, 6cm for the turret, and inside it consists of a thin 5mm angled steel plates with the rest filled with polyurethane. The hull BDD is approximately 15cm thick and the curved turret armour is approximately around 20cm thick. This composition, while space intensive, adds increased protection value against heat rounds. As a result, the vehicle approximately had around 450 to 490 millimeters of frontal armor protection versus heat, and 320 to 380 millimeters versus armored piercing thin stabilized discarding saber. The protection increase was comparable to the early variants of the Chobham armor back in its day. By itself, the entire BDD armor kit weighs approximately two tons. New anti-heat rubber screens were installed on the sides of some vehicles, although this feature was optional and many vehicles lacked it. Last but not least, the frontal part of the bottom, from the lower front plate weld to the second pair of road wheels, received an additional 20mm of armour as anti-mine protection. As for other protection measures, the new 81mm 902 Bravo Tushka smoke grenade launchers were installed on the turret and the vehicle received a soda anti-napalm system. The next big change concerned its firepower. The vehicle kept its 100mm D10 TS2 gun, and the barrel also received a new thermal shroud, but received a new Volner fire control system consisting of the KTD-5 laser rangefinder, the BV-62 ballistics computer, and the 32PB gun sight, along with a Cyclon M1 stabilizer. The accuracy was significantly improved as a result, but the vehicle received something else to add to its destructive capabilities. The 1K1161 Bastion system, allowing it to launch guided missiles from its barrel. The Bastion system used a special 3U BK-10-1 round, firing the 9M-117 missile, which is capable of penetrating up to 750mm of steel. The minimum range was 100m, and the maximum of 4000m, and the average velocity of the missile was around 370m a second. The problem with the Bastion missile system wasn't its efficiency, it could destroy practically any contemporary enemy tank at its time, but its price. Two of these missiles were expensive as the entire tank. All these changes were of course extremely heavy. The weight of the vehicle increased from 36 to 40.9 tons. To compensate for this increase, the vehicle was given an upgraded variant of the classic V55 engine called the V55U, with its power increased from 580 horsepower to 620 horsepower. As for the suspension, there were some slight tweaks to it and the drive sprocket received a welded cover. That prevented the track from slipping from it. The vehicle also received new track links and with different grousers for improved off-road capabilities. There were four subtypes to the T55M. The standard T55M is described as I've just mentioned. The T55M1 is the same vehicle but without the Bastion system. The T55M-1 is a T55M with a 690 horsepower V46 5M engine instead of the V55U. And finally, the T55M1-1 is a T55M without the Bastion missile system but with the V46 5M engine. As you can see guys, this vehicle has so many different variations and models, it is extremely confusing as to tell where they come from and what features they have. Visually, it's quite difficult to tell them apart from each other and other modernized variants. Indeed, many of the T-55M photographs available on the internet today are mislabeled as Czechoslovakian or Polish tanks. The Soviet T-55M was further developed to produce the T-55MV equipped with the Contact ERA kit, or Explosive Reactive Armor kit. It's difficult to track how many T-55s were modified to the M and MA variants in the Soviet Union. The best estimate is around several thousand, which was then made their way across the globe and delivered, distributed all over the place. Details about their combat performance are also quite equally sketchy, although some were apparently used in Afghanistan, but I never saw any, to be honest, other than the ones that were completely annihilated. A considerable number of T-55s, including the T-55MV model, was sold to Syria, and sources of varying quality place hundreds of T-55M variants in Angola, Cuba, Finland, Georgia, Sudan, Somalia, Uganda, and although given the normal chaos of it all, at least some of them have likely have made it to both Polish and Czechoslovakian origin, which are not identical to the Soviet ones. 
The T-55 was most effective against light to medium armor vehicles. The basic ammunition load for the main gun was 43 rounds. External fuel cells made the tank very vulnerable though, as it does have very thin armor protection on those barrels. The T-55 has limited ability to depress its main gun, hindering the tank as it fires in the defilade from high ground. In addition, the gunner's primary sight is slave to the main gun, which does not allow the gunner to acquire targets in a hull down posture. Although the half egg shaped turret of the T-55 has good ballistic qualities, it provides extremely cramped working conditions for the crew, resulting in a very slow rate of fire, and the protection afforded by its low silhouette, one meter lower than the M60s back in the day, is counterbalanced by its poor armor protection really, which is quite thin by western standards. By the same standards, its gun control equipment was also very crude. It shares the disadvantage of most Soviet tanks back in its day by having the limited ability to depress that main gun and thus not being able to be effectively exposing itself to engage targets. Ammunition and fuel were also stored in quite vulnerable positions within inside the vehicle. The lack of turret baskets also prevented loading difficulties and there's also limited amounts of ready ammunition in the turret. The driver, commander and gunner are all in line with one another. The T-55 is also not airtight. Although crew members are protected from radioactive dust by the filtration system, they must wear their individual protective masks and clothing to guard against chemical, biological and difficult nerve agents. But at the end of the day guys, if they were going to use chemical weapons, I think that's something they were considering anyway and weren't too concerned with. The tank normally should be able to pass through contaminated areas rapidly and then be fully decontaminated before it's fully operational again. The tank can be made watertight for fording obstacles up to 1.4 meters deep. However, it may take up to half an hour to an hour to prepare a medium tank unit like this for a snorkeling operation, and the entrance exit points may also need extreme preparation. So guys, there you have it, a tank that is covered in history from head to toe. There are so many variants of this vehicle, guys, which is just outstanding. I mean, it's very confusing at the same time. I mean, we got so many different variants from the T-55M, MV, MV-1, MV-1, T-55K, T-55 Alpha, AD, AMV, it just, the list goes on and on and on. But clearly this vehicle has done its time and is still doing its time to this day. Is that a little concerning? Yes, I would say so, considering it's a vehicle that was designed a long time ago and still being utilized today. But at the end of the day, it is still a mobile gun platform being able to put a 100mm round onto target quite well with its upgraded systems. That being said, it really has no match against modern main battle tanks uh, that are out there today. It's what I would say is what's called fin fodder, uh, i.e. armored piercing fin stabilized discarding sabo fodder. Um, these things just get chewed up like butter, really. Uh, it's a real unfortunate situation for those militaries who can't afford uh, more sophisticated weaponry to kind of rely on these kind of tanks. But it is what it is. You know, some nations don't have the money, the, res the facilities or the resources to be able to host huge, expensive main battle tanks systems uh, and this is still going to be able to be a quite a dependable vehicle depending on the situation being placed into. Tank on tank warfare? Absolutely not. This vehicle would probably get hands down wiped out uh, depending on its variant if it's an older variant for sure uh, against some modern armor. Anti-tank guided missiles are for sure going to knock this thing out um, so it is a little concerning knowing that these vehicles are still being utilized today but that's the way the future is now guys. We need to upgrade and make do with what we have instead of trying to procure all these new tanks but I think this is a little bit of an uh, overstatement in terms of uh, you know upgrading a vehicle I really do think this vehicle needs to be phased out of, of most military applications but it is an iconic tank and one of which I have a lot of respect for uh, if you have seen the film The Beast um, you should know about this tank quite a bit and if you haven't seen that film I would strongly strongly suggest you watch it it is an absolutely amazing tank film uh, probably one of the greatest if not the greatest tank film out there in regards to Russian armor in Afghanistan very very interesting movie um, I'm actually not sure if it is a T-55, maybe a 62, pretty sure it's a 55, um, but go check it out guys, fantastic movie, I really think you'll enjoy it. Um, I appreciate you stopping by today guys, I hope you learned a little bit about the T-55-54 series, 
Um, if you find anything that is incorrect or uh, not as to what the T5554 series specification should be or any information that I've placed on there incorrectly, I would love it if you could let me know in the comments section. Also guys, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd love it if you could hit that like button, leave me a comment. Um, once again, feel free to share this video around on Facebook and such. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. Plenty more vehicles coming up in the future. If you have any requests for videos uh, for vehicles that you want me to review or check out, I can do that for you. There's a whole long list of vehicles I'm going down the line of, guys, uh, and other videos that people want me to do. So just stand by for that. I'm working really hard to try and get it out to you. Um, I apologize for some of the comedic value videos I've placed out recently, but guys, I, there's so many people upset over them. Like, come on, it's just having a laugh. But I guess some people just have a completely different sense of humor to me, which is completely fine. My content's not always going to be liked, and that's okay. So, guys, once again, thank you for joining me. All the best from both myself and the T5554 series. All the best. Bye-bye.